Or how common is doubt and is it part of the human condition? Let me take the last part first. I think it's definitely, unquestionably part of the human condition. And I think that's for a number of reasons. Uh, theologically, you can say we're all sinners. Anthropologically, you can say we're all finite. And I, 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 make, I, I make fun of this when I talk to people. I go, you know, you know how you know we're all finite? And no, you know, nobody says anything in the crowd. And I'll say, because we're not God. So unless you think you're God, we're finite. So if you're finite and sinners, and let me just add, socially, a third one, theologically, anthropologically, socially, around the world right now with, with everything going on, just so, many, so much upheaval in the world. I heard yesterday that there are 260 million starving children in the world right now because of uh, problems, additional pro pe people. And that's going to add to it because mom's being nervous and anxious and what's the world hold and what about the next leader and so yeah, I think it's very common. And of the kinds of doubt, I would, if I had to guess, we've uh, Gary Simpson, a friend of mine who's a clinical psychologist, PhD, and he's tested for this stuff, but my take on it, on the testing, is I would say 70% of doubters, it could be more, are emotional, and I'll divide the remaining 30% between factual and volitional. Uh, but again, factual being, what's the answer to this question? If I get it, I'm done. And volitional being, uh, yeah, I kind of still think Christianity's true, but man, somebody burned me, church wasn't fun, I used to hold all these positions, but it's not that it's false, it's just that it does nothing for me, I'm a little burned out. Mm -hmm. So that kind, maybe 15% too. But emotional for sure, when I get letters from people, which is frequent, I've got a former PhD student who does this and has had over a thousand conversations with doubters, and I know I've been doing it for over 30, for over 40 years or so, and I would say, when I get a case that's not emotional, I go, whoa, it's different. So it's like 90%. But of course, I'm sure those stats are stilted because you think, what does it have to take for you to be so bothered that you bug somebody or you think you bug somebody, because that's how they start the letters. Uh, you bug somebody that you don't know, so you want to make sure they know you're really hurting. So just the, just the prerequisite of who would call you would put that percentage up higher. But I would say 70 or no, more percent, and it's known by its what ifing. We've said this before, this part. It's known by its what ifing, and it's known by the simple question, does it hurt? Mm -hmm. Now sometimes with volitional doubt, they're still hurting from emotional, but it morphs into volitional, and they're starting to get to the don't care point. Mm -hmm. But you can still ruffle their feathers by saying like, uh, you know, do you, do you still think about hell or does it worry you? Or you can still ruffle the feathers. And the factual doubter could stop the emotional doubt and could still say, well, give me, give, give me a break and, and give me five responses to this. So, so overall, let me just summarize it this way. I think we, we are whole people. We're not pieces of the pie. We are whole people. And so therefore doubt almost never affects only one kind. And if I had to pick a flow, it usually flows from factual, unattended, to emotional, unattended, to I don't care, volitional. So there's some over, okay. an overview for you. And when you talk about the stats, you're talking believer, non-believer, Christian, non-Christian, that you would put them in the same camp, that most unbelief or most doubt? I've talked to way fewer non-Christians, but I talked to a fair number of non-Christians who wrote to me and say, I doubt. And I would say a good number of those are factual. Sometimes I think the unbelievers might be a little more factual, but man, there's a lot of hurting unbelievers. Um, I'm thinking of one of the best, one of the best known skeptics in the whole world, and he says plainly to people, "I'm not a Christian. I'm not a Christian." And I've seen him call himself an atheist. I don't know exactly what. I can't speak for him, but he says. 
he sometimes wakes up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat wondering what if, what if hell really exists. And uh, he, I don't want to use the word placates because that's kind of negative, but he is satisfied to tell himself that hell is not in line with God's character, but a good heaven would be. And he doesn't believe in either one, but he says he would have no problem with there being heaven. So there's that kind of stuff where people who, who think, oh no, what if there's a hell? That can bother the unbeliever. So I wouldn't be surprised if the, if the numbers were very, very similar, like 70 and 215s on each side. But of course, I'm not going to hear from the skeptics who are bad cases of volitional because they're not going to contact me because they don't care. If they're Christians and they don't care, their husband or wife might push them, their pastor might push them. But if they have a bunch of friends who think it's a bunch of baloney to doubt, I'll see less of those cases. Okay. So I got a fair number of factual from unbelievers and a fair a lot of emotional cases from unbelievers. All right, so a common phrase for emotional doubters is what if. Is there a common phrase for volitional unbelievers? Oh, by the way, I'd say what if it doesn't hurt. Okay. Those two. For volitional, yeah, I would, if I could only ask two questions, I would say, do you think it's true? Or do you not think Christianity is true? Do you think Christianity is true? And do you care? You know, if not, why not? But do you think it's true and, and do you care? Those are the two questions I'd ask a volitional daughter. Do you often get back, I don't care? Yeah. Yeah, but you, could, you already know that when you call them. Because from their actions, they don't, uh, they don't want to be bothered. Because your friends, though, they'll talk to you.